So 36 hours ago, we asked you what you wanted to see at the 2015 Frankfurt Motor Show, and most of you seem to say everything. Show us absolutely everything. So this is our roundup, very quick. We've got about half an hour to get around the whole show, so we're going to try and show you a few of the other bits and bombs, the miscellaneous things that we might have missed out otherwise. And where better to start than Mansory? Obviously, we've seen some cars in recent years. I've quite liked a few of them. They've done a sort of things like the, the Ventador across there, which is quite sort of it's quite nice almost. You can, there's lots of carbon. It's all good. But then they do things like this two-tone for this Bentley GTC, and there's something even worse over here. Come on, have a look. There's a Rolls-Royce Wraith, which is um, you know the blue is quite nice. The carbon you've got to sort of admire the immaculateness of the carbon. But. I'm sorry. You, you don't do that to the spirit of ecstasy. That's just wrong on so many levels. So the big news on the Jaguar stand, apart from F-Pace, which we've already done a video on, is the fact that this is going to be in the new James Bond film, Spectre, which is due out, I think, at the end of October. So, yeah, it seems to be a battle between Jaguar and Aston Martin as to who's going to take the limelight in terms of the, the vehicles involved. New colour. I still want them to produce this car. Why are they not producing it? It would be so cool to see it against the 918, the P1 and the LaFerrari. Big man in the way now. Bond villain. Not wishing to be outdone. Land Rover has obviously got in on the act as well with this spectacularly muddy Defender, which is coming straight from the set, rather like what we saw in the, the opening credits of the previous film. It seems to favour this sort of 110 with the camera at the back configuration. I don't know, it must be a special services thing. And another one, this one, the SVR, which um, should get him away in time. I love the, the light bar on top of that. I've used one of those in competition when I did a, a hill rally last year, and they are absolutely amazing. That is not just for show. They are phenomenal in terms of lighting up the road. So there you go. This is the new Fiat 500, which, um, well, looks quite a lot like the other new Fiat 500. But uh, it's, uh, it's still a very cute looking little car. It looks even more like the original in the sort of design cues. This is the comic edition. Uh, I'm not quite sure, it seems like sort of some sort of cutout and keep around there. And uh, this is the, confusingly, the navy edition, which appears not to be navy blue at all, so it must be something to do with sailing. All I really know about Decra is that um, the logo used to appear on Michael Schumacher's cap. But here's this, the um, Robomobile. You can get rear wheel steering now on the standard Carrera in 911, but this, this takes things to a whole other level. The BMW X1, with a little M badge on the side. The Cactus is fast becoming perfect motor show fodder for Citroen. It's, it's that sort of car you can make into pretty much anything you want, as they've um, demonstrated here. Um, thank you. Well, I don't know what that hand sign was, but, but it's something to do with surfing. Just in case you thought Porsche was going to have it all its own way with the Mission E and these type of doors, here's the Aircross from Citroen. I, I actually, I, I love these sorts of doors. I think they look really, really cool. And um, yeah, the aircross as a whole looks, looks super chunky and quite nice if you're going to have these sort of sporty SUVs, small things. Good tyres. This is the Kia Sportage GT line. It's quite good. The front looks a bit like a Cayenne, I think. This is the Peugeot Quartz concept, which is um, meant to be a thrill to drive. And obviously, we're all about thrill of driving, so. Yes, at least they've got the Dakar car to sort of back it up, I suppose. It's, uh, it's quite cool. I'm, am I getting to like these, these SUVs? I don't know. I, I, I do hope not. Ford has got the EcoSport with groovy black wheels. And it's also got the Edge over there, also with black wheels if you want. Mitsubishi is showing the PHEV version of their Outlander plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. But more interestingly, they've done a cross-country version which looks really pretty cool. This is a plug-in hybrid I really would like to have a go in. They're also saying it's obviously got SAWC, which you might remember from the Mitsubishi Evo Lancer. This is its progeny, its current version. Not quite the same, but still pretty cool. Sangyong has gone sporty by putting this in matte black. It's an XLV. It's a little bit challenging in the looks department. They've got the Tivoli though as well. That's slightly better looking. This is the Toyota stand, and this is the CHR concept. It's getting ridiculous. This is literally every stand we walk past. There's just there's one everywhere, everywhere you look. Possibly the best looking of them all is the Mazda Cuero, but then it is just a stunning concept with no powertrains or anything like that. Swoopy. 
This is the Opal stand, so this is effectively what we're looking at is the new Vauxhall Astra. We haven't got any news on any VXR versions yet, but uh, it bodes well. It's lighter, but quite considerably lighter, up to 200 kilos lighter than the outgoing model. It's also shorter. So yes, this could be, when the Focus has started to feel like really quite a big car now, this could be taking things in the other direction, which I, I quite like. So there we go. Should be driving it fairly soon. Thank goodness we visited the Nissan stand, otherwise we might have missed, well, another one. This is the Nissan Grips, Grips, Z concept. It looks remarkably like the Toyota one we've just seen over there. I think. I'm getting confused now. Slicks, carbon wheels and ducktail spoiler. This, this has to be the best of these SUV concepts, I think. Well done, Grips. Skoda has been cleaning up in WRC2 in the same way really that VW has been cleaning up in full WRC. They've been doing it with their new Fabia R5. This concept is the R5 Fabia Combi, which uh, I quite like. It's sort of in the same way I liked the Volvos when they did the estates in touring cars. This is, uh, yeah, quite fun. Get the longer tail swinging on the rally stages. So that's a brief roundup of all the other bits and pieces of the show. We tried to find Aston Martin because they've announced the DB11, which is a replacement for the DB9, but we really don't think they're here. It's an enormous show, so we might have missed them, but um, here's a picture of the DB11, just so you can see. <laughs> Great, isn't it? And this is the Porsche 919, that's obviously one at Le Mans. So there we go. That's Frankfurt done for another year. Hope we haven't missed anything. We have. It's, it's like the um, uh, trick question exam. Tell us what we've missed. Hope you've enjoyed it, and see you at the next show.